tears. And I didn't quite make it to there either. And that's good. I love those tears. I love that kind of tears. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, Majinun. Let's give him another round of applause. My country skies are bluer than the ocean, and sunlight beams on clover leaf and pine. But other lands have sunlight too, and clover, and skies are everywhere as blue as mine. Oh, hear my song, thou God of all the nations, a song of peace for their land and for mine. Yeah, that's our prayer. Thank you all for coming out today to Live Peace International Day. Uh, those of you who have been with us for the full day so far and those of you just coming in, uh, and those of you joining us on the live streaming online, this is an event both happening on a local scale, but also at different venues across the country on different scales. So thank you for joining us uh, to hear from speakers, from healers, from artists on what is being done in our community in Bellingham here to promote peace and justice, again, both on the individual scale of the human heart, but also collectively in the community uh, for all of us and those with the most needs. And thank you again, Majinun, for sharing your voice uh, and, and your heart with us. All right, our next presenter is Grace Wisher with the Alternative Library. Um, Grace, did I get your last name right? Yes, excellent. I always like it when I get last names right and don't have to apologize afterwards to speakers. Uh, Bellingham Alternative Library is an educational cooperative and lending library which is run by and for its members. We work to, uh, we work to support any manifestation of a counterculture and maintain a space free of oppression. Our goal is to provide a community of passionate learning, whether that be in a place of a traditional education or in addendum to it. Speaking on behalf of the Alternative Library is our founder, Future Man? Oh, and Grace. I, I didn't know a Future Man was here, so. Hello, um, I'm Future Man, um, and I am one of the folks kind of spearheading the library. Um, and kind of the whole point of the library is it is a cooperative learning center where anyone can be as involved as they want to be in their education and also helping to provide educational resources for others. Um, let's see. Um, I guess we kind of have some focal points. Uh, all, of our, all of our information there is kind of directed at being countercultural or uh, alternative to mainstream society and the normal Babylonian nonsense that you're constantly barotted with. Um, so we, but at the Alternative Library we have, um, we support extremes of any variety, whether it be to the far left um, or to the far right, but um, because we're surrounded constantly by moderation and that doesn't seem to get us really anywhere. Um, <laughs> he knows. <laughs> um, yeah, what is kind of some of the focal points of the library um, are community. So that would include like education, um, community building, um, like of, of human beings interacting with each other. Um, and we have like a lot of things on, on, um, on like architecture and design, permaculture design, gardening that goes in line with um, with community building. 
Um, we also have a, um, like in line with community, also is education and family health, and um, we have a pretty good collection of radical children's literature as well. Um, and we also focus on media and communication um, by supporting different forms of communication and, and trying to bring an aesthetic experience to learning by including um, graphic literature and a lot of comics um, and experimental art um, so that it can promote a more kind of soulful way of communicating um, that is more tied to an aesthetic experience rather than an anesthetic experience like most typical education. Um, what else do I have on my little dealie? Um, yeah, those are my thoughts for, for the moment, I suppose. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Grace, who um, is probably a much better public speaker than I am. So take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here, you know, like everyone else has been saying. Um, it's really nice to see people gathering in the pursuit of peace. Um, so some things I wanted to say about the library are um, just uh, we are an educational community, so it's different than maybe your traditional library in that it's way more interactive. Um, we think this is really important in expanding our idea of what an educational center means. If we think about what education centers we've seen in our lives or um, in the media, they're very limited. I mean, there's like elementary school through college, um, maybe there's public libraries, but well, who are those things serving? Um, those are serving young people and people with privilege. Um, and the public library, which is a really great um, thing, um, which, as Colin said, serves certain elements of our intellectual experience, but not others. So one thing that we seek to do is fill in the holes where other educational centers kind of left off. So with the idea of... Uh, schools serving the young and the privileged, we're definitely reaching out to people that are not served by schools. And this is a lot of people. Um, you know, people that are older, people with mental disabilities, people that are homeless. I mean, you name it, we have people coming to the library who are trying to investigate learning, and it's really beautiful. Um, and then with adding to the public library, we offer more of an interactive experience. Uh, one of the great things about the library is we're there for discussion. So you come in, you want to talk about anything, and the library is the librarian is there to engage with you um, and to provide books for you for whatever uh, adding to that learning you'd like to do. So that's really important. Uh, also, creating a culture of diverse opinions and voices. Uh, we have a wide variety of different uh, authors and perspectives. And like Colin was saying, you know, just deviating from the normal moderation and uh, I forget the word is kind of like complacency learning, like, okay, whatever. Um, just like getting passionate. Um, and like Colin said, also, uh, oh yeah, so critical spaces. Um, we aim to not just educate, but really engage and ask questions of what we're learning. And so we're not giving you a book and telling you this is fact, but like, hey, let's comment on like how, how much of this is bullshit and how much of this is not and why. And I think those uh, conversations are really important. Um, so also countercultural education is a huge thing. I think to go into a little more detail about that, um, you know, culture feeds us all of these lies that are so deep and so widespread and so large scale that we can't even conceptualize them necessarily because they're just in our bodies um, and in everything we do. And so part of our goal is to counteract all of that by trying to get people to ask those critical questions. Um, and you know, these large scale lies can be anything from you know, the effectiveness of the war on terror or um, the war on drugs or the myth of justice in the legal system or you know, discriminatory beliefs or naturalizing violence as normal or, you know, I could go on and on. Um, there's lots of lies. 
So uh, exposing the lies. And I think that this is... <laughs> Uh, I think this is especially important for children and youth. Uh, we're trying to encourage the center to be more of a youth center because we want to have more opportunities for children to do things besides just hang out on the street or get into drug culture or drinking or whatever other mindless activities. Uh, and that's not just for children. <laughs> Adults also do that. Um, and provide an alternative also to their normal schooling. Uh, in contrast to normal schooling, we also want to bring about uh, personal growth through education. So not just things about society, but how can we grow in our own uh, you know, ways of doing things and interacting with each other. And then also, like Colin was saying, or Future Man was saying, uh, practical education, uh, like things about how to build or how to garden or things like that. Um, you know, one last thing I was just thinking of was just thinking about education centers the way they are and why they are that way and who they're serving is really important. Like education, I think in a lot of ways, is serving to create people that fall in line with what society wants them to do. And so traditional education seeks to control people. And so one of our goals is having education that seeks to free people. Anything else to say? Um, yeah, if you want to take a look at uh, small sample of kind of books that we have at the library. Uh, I brought down a table's worth of, of um, really high quality lit to take a gander at. So if you've got a free moment, um, come and check it out.